So we begin chapter 15, Hester and Pearl. At this point, Chillingworth has left, and Hester and Pearl are alone, and they're down by the seashore. And Hester admits that she hates Chillingworth. She um, has no problem saying that at this point in the story. And she also says that he has done more harm than she ever did to him. So Pearl is down by the seashore, and she's playing uh, with the seaweed that's down there. And she takes the seaweed and creates her own green scarlet letter on her dress. And Pearl wants her mom to explain what the scarlet letter means. And Hester keeps telling her, no, stop asking. Uh, I, I don't want to talk about that. And Pearl keeps asking, why do you wear the scarlet letter? And then she makes the connection, Pearl does, uh, and she asks, why does the minister keep his hand over his heart? So Hester finally says, the, the scarlet letter has no meaning. And then she asks Pearl about the scarlet letter she made out of the seaweed. And this conversation keeps going back and forth until the end of the chapter, cha uh, chapter 15, when Hester tells Pearl, Hold thy tongue, naughty child. Do not tease me, else I shall shut thee into the dark closet. Chapter 16, we're still in the same setting out in the forest by the seashore. And if you recall, the last half of the book, I said, takes place in three days. And so everything's compressed here. And Hester and Pearl are still out there in the forest. And uh, chapter 16 contains a lot of symbolism with sunshine and shadow. And I'm not going to get too much into that, but um, there are scenes where Pearl is skipping around in the, um, on a trail and the sunshine is, on, is hitting her, but Hester's in shadow. And every time Hester reaches out her hand, it's in shadow, and Pearl makes the observation that the sunshine does not love you. So Hester and Pearl, they're waiting for Dimsdale to pass through the forest. Hester heard that Dimsdale would be passing through, and um, in the meantime, Pearl keeps asking questions about the black man, a reference, of course, to, to the devil, uh, an archetype figure. And she comments that the scarlet letter is the black man's mark. So after uh, Hester and Pearl were alone there in chapter 15 and 16, we finally have chapter 17, pa uh, the pastor and the parishioner, and Dimsdale finally appears. He comes into the um, story here. And uh, so the three of them are together, and they can appear as a family when they are out in the forest. They, the three of them can uh, be together in a natural setting, away from the influences of society. And Dim still makes comments about how much the people love Hester, and they revere her, and she does a lot of good work among them, and that he himself is most miserable, and that Dim still can find no peace. So finally, it's time for Hester to confess, and Hester tells Dimsdale that he has an enemy, and she tells him the truth, the truth of Chillingworth's identity, and that that is her long-lost husband. And at first, Dimstill's really upset. He's very angry. Uh, he says, I cannot forgive thee. But then she says that, let God punish, thou shalt forgive. And she throws her arms around him, and again she asks for forgiveness, and he finally relents and says that he will forgive her. So remember that Hawthorne has created a very strong female role model, which is rare in literature, especially during this time. And he, Dimsdale says for Hester to be strong for him, and that Hester is in fact strong. And she comforts him and tells him what needs to be done. And so finally Hester says that there's the broad pathway of the sea, which in other words means let's get on a ship and let's head back over to Europe. 
and um, live in Germany or France and escape Chillingworth. And at the end of the chapter, we finally see them call each other by their first names, which is significant. Um, Dimsdale says, oh, Hester, and um, Hester Prince says, oh, Arthur. And they call each other by their first names, which in those days would signify that they are close, that they are familiar, that they are friends, that they have a relationship. And finally she whispers, thou shalt not go alone. And all was spoken.